Hi students, welcome to Amar English Academy. In today's class, we will see the summary of "Eyes Are Not Here." This small story is written by Ruskin Bond. So this is a story of a journey of two strangers, two young strangers who were. traveling in train the narrator who is sitting in the alone in the compartment train compartment and uh, traveling to the masuri he is traveling to the Mus masuri and sitting alone in the compartment till the station rohana arrives in the rohana station a girl a young a girl gets into the train the parent who come to see her off were giving lot of instruction to the girl where to keep her luggage and uh, should not lean towards the window and uh, not to speak with the strangers because they were anxious and they are giving such instructions to the girl as our narrator is a blind okay he assumed that the girl is traveling alone so parents that's why they are giving lot of instructions then they say goodbye to the girl parents parents say goodbye to the girl and uh, the girl get into the train and the train moves out of the station the girl comes and sits in front of the narrator so narrator assume that imagine that the girl is wearing a slippers by the sound the slippers were making okay when she is walking okay whenever the heels the slippers hit the heels okay they were making a sound by that they came to know that the girl was wearing a slippers and girl sits in front of the narrator so narrator asked the girl are you going to are you going to dehra the girl started little she said I thought I am alone in the compartment, so that's the reason I I got little uh, confused. Okay, so I haven't noticed you. The author thinks that the narrator thinks that he might be sitting in the corner where there is a shade, and uh, she is not. so the girl not noticed him so the girl not noticed him and uh, he says yes it happens actually the people who are having a good eyesight they fail to notice the things which are just in front of them because there are a lot of things visible to them they have to capture the lot of things in their uh, eyes and mind that is the reason they fail to notice the things which are in front of them meanwhile the people who cannot see or who can see very little they are very choosy what to see and the same thing they will register in their mind okay if it is not by eyes not through the eyes okay just perceiving through different organs this is what normally happens so he says so the girl there was a silent little silence in bit in the compartment then the girl asks so where you are going the narrator says i am going to dera then to masuri so the girl excited by hearing the name of the masuri masuri wow such a wonderful place i love to be in masuri okay especially in the month of uh, october it is nice to be there in a masuri 
It is a wonderful, wonderful place, she says. And the author replies, yes, you are absolutely right. It is a beautiful place. The hill, the hills covered with the wild dahlias, delicious sun. And in the night you can sit in front of the log fire and listen to the music. As the visitors, as the tourists were very less in the month of October, so the roads are empty. So the whole place was very calm and quiet. You can enjoy there. The narrator says. <clears throat> then the girl says, she is going to Bharanpur and her aunt is coming to receive her in the Bharanpur station. And uh, she asked the author, narrator okay so why don't you are not why don't you see out of the window why you are seeing only in the compartment why you are not seeing out of the window then author being a narrator being a blind he cannot see anywhere he can't see anything still he makes an effort to move towards the window pane and the window was open and uh, he started seeing outside okay to perceive uh, uh, the landscape what is happening outside the window he pretends like that okay even though he can't see but uh, to hide his blindness okay he acts like that moving towards the window and uh, he pretends as if he is seeing outside the window and he says when we are traveling in a train, it seems that we are still and the trees are moving. Okay, this we can experience by seeing out of the window, he says to the girl. He want to, he don't want to reveal his blindness. Okay, he want to make a impression to the, such an impression to the girl, she should think that this person is perfect. And he can see. That is the reason he said this. Then the girl says, It's quite common, nothing special in that. When we are traveling, okay, even children can observe that when they are traveling in a bus or train. So it appears like we are still and the trees are moving. Then there was a huge silence in between the girl and uh, the narrator. Then narrator or uh, take little risk and says, you have an interesting face. The narrator says to the girl, you have an interesting face. He was very choosy while choosing the sentence, while talking to the girl. He could have said you have a beautiful face or you have a fair face. Okay. But if she was not there, then he will be caught. That is the reason. He is playing a very safe game of that blindness. He says, you have an interesting face. And the girl laughs loudly, pleasantly, loud ringing laugh. She says, I am really bored, bored hearing that I have a pretty face. A lot of people will say the same thing. But it was nice to hear, I, am, I have an interesting face. Then narrator says, yes, of course, you have pretty face also. An interesting face can be pretty face also. You have a pretty face. He admires her beauty. Okay. Then uh, the girl has to say something. It is her turn now to hide her blindness. Okay. Here the fellow passenger, the girl was also blind. Okay, and she says, you are also a gallant young man. You are a gallant young man. Okay, so both praises each other to hide their, to make an impress, to make an impression or to impress other and to hide their uh, physical impairment, blindness. Okay, 
so this is how uh, they are you know it's a game for uh, narrator actually whenever narrator travels in a train so every time he plays this game this fascinating game with the passengers and even throughout the journey he will hide his blindness from the opposite person he will not reveal his blindness physical impairment to the opposite person so he enjoys that that kind of a feeling big uh, opposite person he could not able to trace the narrator's blindness the fellow passenger thinks that this is a normal person and he is a right person he is not a blind he can see so this gives a lot of uh, pleasure to the uh, narrator that's why he plays such a game now the narrator says it is almost uh, your destination came that is baharanpur and she says thank goodness i cannot bear train journey more than 2 3 hours i cannot bear the train journey more than 2 3 hours but the author says himself okay i can bear the journey of any duration okay hours together days together just talking to you her voice was very pleasant he was impressed by her voice it was mountain stream sparkling voice he was impressed by her voice and he says himself i can spend any time okay you you are telling that okay you cannot uh, bear more than 2 3 hours in train journey but i can bear okay the hours and days together just to uh, listen to your beautiful melodious voice he says to himself okay so then the girl started collecting her luggage as the station arrived and uh, she said goodbye to the narrator the narrator was standing very near to the girl he could make out the smell of uh, smell of that uh, uh, scent she used to her hair it was very pl- pleasant odor and mesmerizing mesmerizing so as he was standing very near the author thought of touching her hair but modesty not allowed for that as he was a gentleman he cannot do that even though he was standing very near to the girl he was attracted by the perfume that she put for her hair okay and uh, he could not able to touch her and she says goodbye and she moved off here the author says narrator says the fragrance of that uh, a uh, fragrance of that hair perfume she put her hair she applied to her hair it was still there in the compartment even though the girl passed away okay this the author say compares if you break the flower vase or if you destruct the flower vase okay then also the smell of her roses which were there in the vase it will be there it still exists in a similar way he compares that girl with the flower vase and uh, the aroma of uh, perfume she applied to her hair that she compares the odor of the uh, rose, roses even after breaking destructing spoiling the flower vase okay the aroma of her roses still remains there in the similar way after passing the girl also her perfume hair perfume okay it is still lingered there in the compartment he says as the station arrived there was a lot of noise noise of our vendors and porters and even uh, passengers and even he could hear the voice of that uh, her aunt who came to receive her then 
a person uh, comes comes inside the compartment the new fellow passenger he comes in inside the compartment after seeing the narrator he says i am sorry i am not as beautiful as your previous passenger who just left he was talking about that girl he says he says to the narrator i am not as beautiful as your previous passenger the girl who was who traveled with you and just left so he says and the narrator says yes she was an interesting girl and uh, i have a, a doubt so what kind of hair she was having was a girl was have, having a long hair or short hair okay so please tell me he asked the fellow passenger but the fellow passenger says i am sorry i have not noticed that her hair but i noticed one thing okay that was her eyes she had a very beautiful eyes wonderful eyes okay wonderful eyes but those beautiful eyes were of no use to her in the sense she can't see anything she is she was completely blind you don't know this you have not noticed this the fellow passenger asked the narrator okay in this way the skin bond reveals the fact that even the fellow other girl fellow passenger who was traveling with the narrator was also blind she also played lot of uh, uh, gimmicks or tricks to hide her blindness and succeed also okay so you you can recollect some questions some questions she asked to the narrator why don't you are not why don't you are looking out of the window okay so this question she asked purposely to prove that okay she can see the narrator to hide the fact of blindness and narrator also says when we are traveling in a train it seems we are still and the trees are moving this answer purposely so he said to hide his blindness so both plays the game here okay so to impress the other and to hide their blindness okay to leave such a impression so they are perfect and they are not physically impaired okay uh, this is the way uh, the narrator uh, uses to fool the a uh, fellow passenger she every time this trick he was playing every time to fool the fellow passenger okay to hide their uh, you know blindness this was a fascinating game for him but this time the girl the fellow passenger she being herself blind okay she played a game with the you know uh, narrator and she herself fooled the narrator okay so this is how the story uh, goes and it comes to an end in the end the uh, ruskin bond uh, reveals the blindness of the girl so two fellow passengers strangers traveling in a train both were being a blind okay so they play a lot of gimmick to hide their blindness okay and uh, this is how the story ends fine students i hope you understood the summary if you understand the summary properly then you can answer any question okay from the textbook so please watch this video once or twice so if you are not understanding anything if you have any questions or feedback please write a comment to me if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe and uh, if you find it uh, useful even share it to your friends and suggest me what are the videos you wanted me to make in future so like it might be a lesson or poem whatever okay so take care keep studying and enjoy
थैंक यू वेरी मच